maybe I just I've got a few. This is how they this is how they look. They're very funny and a little childish, and also they uh, sadly symbolic uh, because they're quite silent. Uh, which I think is uh, is true about our uh, it's true about our actions in the field of art, political actions in the field of art. Yes, these are the these are the ones I made uh, three years ago. Uh, the ones that I make now are no longer. Um, okay, so look, because we're going to I'm go sorry sorry oh I'm sorry sorry I'm going to screen the tower soon. Uh, I would like to um, give an explanation. Uh, this is a, a still from the tower. Unless you have any questions or comments uh, to what I've said so far. Maybe afterwards. Okay, afterwards. Okay. So, so uh, this is a, a still from the tower. It's a. It, this is a. Um, a modernist building uh, built after the war in uh, Warsaw, um, which is no longer uh, existing. It's been demolished a few years ago, shortly after I, I shot the film. Uh, so a little bit of explanation uh, of the context. Uh, Warsaw uh, was uh, almost entirely destroyed in the war. Uh, as many other cities in Europe, as many other cities in uh, uh, in uh, Poland, but it, but also being a capital suffered really extreme uh, destructions, and it was a capital which made it uh, difficult. Mm. These are two images from from the city center. Uh, more or less, eighty percent of the of the city structure uh, was gone in, uh, after the war. So um, uh, very quickly, uh, Warsaw started to be rebuilt, and uh, this is a little bit of a sim simplification, but I have to do it because we don't have a lot of time. There were a lot of architectural styles, or a few architectural styles that were introduced after the war um, to make. Uh, to make the city re uh, uh, get reconstructed uh, quickly, one uh, was um, one was a, a historical reconstruction, which was mostly um, made in order to uh, sort of keep the, na the, the the national spirit and the history, you know, and to have people uh, keep their identity. Uh, the historical reconstruction is a, a, a quite a, a quite a bit of the old town in Warsaw, and also a few a few districts are reconstructed historically. So they are made in order to look like the buildings that that, that, that got destroyed. Uh, then also we've got social realism, which is a political style, uh, because Poland at the time, just to make it uh, clear, even though it's obvious. Uh, for some of you probably, became a, a socialist country, um, quite dependent of the Soviet Union. Uh, so uh, so the, um, the, the social realism was supposed to introduce uh, the communist ideas, but then use the very local form, uh, as, as it does in many other uh, places in the, in the European Union, uh, in the, excuse me, in the in the Eastern Europe, uh, we will go to many places and we will see and we will see buildings that seem to be the same, but at the same time they are very different in form. Uh, they are as communist uh, in spirit, but they are very uh, they are very local in different patterns and materials used because they are local at the same time, uh, and. Uh, the style which I would like to address now in the film and which I would like to tell you a little bit more about is uh, uh, the blocks that were built from the prefabricated materials which now cover most of my country and which are the most typical landscape of the country. What you see now is, um, uh, is a housing district, very beautiful one uh, actually uh, when it was built, now it's covered with with buildings that are between, it's a it's a um, housing district which is called um, uh, be 
behind the Iron Gate uh, neighborhood. And it's, um, it was originally hosting about 30,000 flats, which is, a, uh, which is a lot for Warsaw, which, it, which was a lot for Warsaw, which lost the majority of, the of its housing and uh, needed to host a lot of people who were just without flats. Uh, this is how the, uh, the, uh, the, the houses from the prefabricated materials uh, in Polish they are called big plate. That's how we call the big, big plate houses. It's because it's a big con concrete uh, plate of concrete. This is how they were built. They were built very quickly, uh, and um, uh, and it was quite easy to build. Uh, also, they were built with lack of materials in a in a in a in a, in a crisis. In a moment when people didn't care so much about how they did, how they worked, so um, ho so the, the the houses very often could have been done uh, much better and could have had much better quality than they have just because of the of the situation. Uh, and now I just wanted to say that the prefabricated pre materials were already built. Uh, were already used long ago. The prefabricated materials in architecture started to be used about the 20s, and they were originally used by Le Corbusier, whom you see here, and also whom, I, hum, whom I'm addressing in the tower. So the image on the right is a still from the tower, which you will see in a moment, uh, just, just for you to understand the, the, the people. Uh, and this is another couple who, uh, again, is still from the film, uh, Zofia and Oskar Hansen. This is the, the image of the original couple of architects. And, the, uh, and this image is, is the image from the film. Uh, this is how I'm addressing the couple, not clearly speaking. I'm not clearly speaking that the person whom you've seen before is Le Corbusier and this is um, Zofia and Oskar Hansen, but I'm kind of implying that that could be uh, the people I'm, ad I'm addressing. So I would like to just, uh, just uh, explain to you that a house in the block, in the concrete block, uh, in the communist Poland, let's say be between after the war from the 50s until the, build, the, the blocks were built a little later, but the, let's say 60s, 70s, 80s, the, a house in the block was, uh, was an object of, a, of desire. Everybody wanted to have a house in the block. Uh, everybody dreamed of it and thought the life will change if we get our house and our, our flat at the block. The life will be more comfortable, we'll have so much better conditions of life. Um, and uh, so people are waiting, queuing for the flats. And then every family in Poland has the this, has this story to tell. They were queuing, even my family, I remember when my parents got the key to their new flat on the block. And they were queuing uh, for the flats. Finally, they got the keys to the flats. And then very shortly after, they realized that the reality of the life in the block is very different to the dreams and the des desires uh, that they all shared before. And uh, this is why I wanted to address uh, Oscar and Sofia Hansen, because they are uh, the icons of the icons of Polish uh, post-war modernist architecture, which is an architecture um, uh, loved and widely described by historians of architecture, uh, but hated by its users. So. This, the, the, the block, Zofia and Oskar Hansen was extre were extremely progressive architects, working, living and working as a couple. Uh, uh, they designed incredibly interesting, user-friendly projects. However, their projects uh, are known as being too progressive for the particular time and the particular conditions in which there was lack of materials, you know, the, the, the so-called big plates, the prefabricated materials, only had a few type of sizes. So you, the architects had to 
adjust to the regulations. Uh, apart from that, there were also limitations. So you couldn't design for a certain number of, of members of family. You could only design a certain space. You could not make it bigger or, or smaller. So they were limited by a number of, of regulations. Uh, uh, they, they managed to fit into the regulations because they were very creative. Uh, but they also um, uh, were limited by the conditions of construction. Uh, where they couldn't be present, but and and then there was there was there was freedom and craziness at the time, you know. So the construction engineers were changing their project just because they didn't get the materials delivered. So they were changing in order to build from the materials they got instead of what they ordered, um, and also. Uh, the construction workers were massively stealing materials, which also I'm, applying, and I'm uh, referring to in the film. Why I'm explaining all this is these are all things that I'm referring to in the film, which you will, which you will see in a moment. And now this image, this is the, 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 the blocks which you saw in the offense, which I show, showed at the very beginning. Remember, I told you, please remember this image. So this is the same blocks, block of housing. And why I decided to um, to go and shoot the the, um, the offense there is because I wanted an an iconic image of an an, an image of an I iconic piece of architecture, which is uh, representing the failure of modernist thinking in architecture. Um, but here I would want to underline one more time that this is not a failure of modernist thinking, but the uh, the, the failure of modernist performance of architecture. So, uh, just one more uh, thing about the Zofia Arnowska has and the, the couple of Polish architects. They are responsible for um, a theory of open form. Uh, the theory that implies not only to architecture but also applies to art, uh, science and many other fields of life, I think. Uh, the theory would say that what we create it's just a shell that has no content, and only when it encounters the users, uh, the users will will fill it with it with its content. So they tried to design, as opposed to the closed form, which would impose the meanings and content on the users. They tried to design uh, forms that would have no meaning and no uh, no clear uh, ways. Uh, of using it. So for example, they they using the materials they got again, they designed um, uh, um, the spaces between the buildings in such a way that they could be used for many different functions. So they would not design something that would tell you what to do and also would limit you from doing anything else with it, but they would have you um, use the space as you want. And also, um, the, I told you that the name of the housing neighborhood uh, is called Słowacki neighborhood. So Słowacki was a, uh, was a um, Polish writer and um, poet uh, and playwright. And he, um, so they decided to make it, they were asked to make a monument for him in the district. So they decided instead of making a traditional monument with a figure on a pedestal, they decided to make an open air theater. And that open air theater would also be a place where you can sit down and chat, you can use it for many different functions. Uh, so, um, so, and this is how, this is how it looked. It's, it's, um, this is an image that that shows us that it shows us from quite close. So maybe you don't have a, a larger landscape, but if you maybe please imagine that it's on a hill and uh, there's more of these cubes that you see, and then uh, the stage or something that you could use as a stage is on the very bottom, and these uh, cubes are where the audience could possibly sit. But it's very unclear that this is uh, that this is a theater. Um, also, I wanted to show you an interior of a typical Polish house. All these images, I, all these images that I'm showing you, sorry, no, all these images that I'm showing you here are images that I found on um, 
of their internet. Yes, uh, so I'm later than time, making it much faster than I wanted. Uh, so, um, so the tower is a story about, um, now I sound like it's only a story about architecture, but I think maybe we could discuss it afterwards when we've seen the work. Uh, to what extent the architecture is actually a tool of control also. Um, and the, uh, the film will also address a lot of um, um, very typical Polish, Polish or rather East European um, uh, memories from the, from the time of communists. And I often think that the film is very Polish, but then I happen to you to show it in many other countries, uh, uh, including Asia, and I always am very surprised with how with the reception I get and the feedback I get from the film because a lot of people will find it very local. <laughs> uh, so I'm really curious about what you will tell me uh, after. Oh, sorry. After, um, after you see the film. So now, I've got the film in, um, with, uh, the film is in Polish. It's an opera musical uh, shot in Polish modern, post-war modernist houses and about them. Uh, it's an, an, it, I've got it in, with Chinese subtitles. And with English subtitles, what shall I show? Chinese, I Chinese yes. 